Hello, BCPS students and families. We are happy to share the Read Aloud Flossie and the Fox with you today. Flossie and the Fox is a revision of a traditional fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood. Today, we will review how to read and understand fiction text, which is a little different than what you've done for the last week or so. During the Read Aloud today, we will stop and talk about how this story is different from the traditional tale of Little Red Riding Hood. Flossie is a much different character than Little Red Riding Hood was. Listen to see how the author, Patricia McKissick, develops Flossie into a strong, confident character. After you listen to the story, we'll ask you some questions to think about and even talk with someone at home. Then you'll see a few writing prompts presented. You can choose one or two of those prompts to write about. You can even share your writing with your teacher. Finally, we will give you a few ideas for how to extend and enrich your learning and have some fun. I hope you enjoyed listening to Flossie and the Fox by Patricia McKissick. Hello, BCPS students and families. Welcome to another Read Aloud this week. Today, I will be reading the story Flossie and the Fox, written by Patricia C. McKissick. Illustrated by Rachel Isadora. Thank you to Dial Books for Young Readers, a division of Penguin Publishing, for granting permission for us to bring you this read aloud today. Today, as I'm reading, I'm going to stop and we're going to think about how the author is developing the characters in the story. Flossie and the Fox is a revision story of an original tale, Little Red Riding Hood. I bet you know the story of Little Red Riding Hood. I want you to think about that story today. And I want you to think about Little Red Riding Hood herself. As I'm reading, think about how Flossie is very different from Little Red Riding Hood. Are you ready to get started? Me too. Here we go. Flossie! The sound of Big Mama's voice floated past the cabins in Sophie's quarters, round the smokehouse, beyond the chicken coop, all the way down to Flossie Finley. Flossie tucked away her straw doll in a hollow log, then hurried to answer her grandmother's call. Here I am, Big Mama, Flossie said after catching her breath. It was hot, hotter than a usual Tennessee August day. Big Mama stopped sorting peaches and wiped her hands and face with her apron. Take these to Miss Viola over at the McCutcheon's place, she said, reaching behind her and handing Flossie a basket of fresh eggs. Seem like they've been troubled by a fox. Ms. Viola's chickens be so scared, they can't even now lay a stone. Big Mama clicked her teeth and shook her head. Why come Mr. J.W. can't catch the fox with his dogs? Flossie asked, putting a peach in her apron pocket to eat later. Every time they corner that old slickster, he gets away. I'll tell you... Fox is one sly critter. How do a fox look? Flossie asked. I disremember ever seeing one. Big Mama had to think a bit. Chili, a fox be just a fox. But one thing for sure, that rascal loves eggs. He'll do most anything to get at some eggs. Flossie tucked the basket under her arm and started on her way. Don't tarry now, Big Mama called, and be particular about them eggs. Yes, um, Flossie answered. The way through the woods was shorter and cooler than the road route under the open sun. Hmm, what if I come upon a fox, thought Flossie. Oh, well, a fox be just a fox. That ain't so scary. Flossie commenced to skip along, 
when she came upon a critter she couldn't recollect ever seeing. He was sitting inside the road like he was expecting somebody. Fossey skipped right up to him and nodded a greeting the way she had been taught to do. Top of the morning to you, little missy, the critter replied. And what is your name? I be Flossie Finley, she answered with a proper curtsy. I reckon I don't know who you be either. Slowly the animal circled around Flossie. I am a fox, he announced all the time eyeing the basket of eggs. He stopped in front of Flossie, smiled as best a fox can, and bowed. At your service. Flossie rocked back on her heels, then up on her toes, back and forth, back and forth, carefully studying the creature who was claiming to be a fox. Nope, she said at last. I just purely don't believe it. You don't believe what? Fox asked, looking away from the basket of eggs for the first time. I don't believe you a fox, that's what. Fox's eyes flashed anger. Then he chuckled softly. <laughs> My dear child, he said, sounding right disgusted. Of course I'm a fox. A little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Whatever do they teach children these days? Flossie tossed her head in the air. Well, whatever you are, you shall sure think a heap of yourself, she said and skipped away. I'm going to stop here. It seems that Flossie is not really frightened by this fox at all. I'm sort of wondering, now that she sees this creature, does she recognize the fox, or is she truly not still remembering? Hmm. I'm not really sure. I need to keep reading and find out. Let's continue. Fox looked shocked. Wait, he called. You mean you're not frightened? Not just a bit? Flossie stopped. Then she turned and say, I ain't never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you, and I don't even now know you a real fox for a fact? Fox pulled himself tall. He cleared his throat. <clears> throat> Are you saying I must offer proof that I am a fox before you will be frightened of me? That's just what I'm saying. Little Flossie skipped on through the piney woods while that fox fella rushed away looking for whatever he needed to prove he was really who he said he was. Meanwhile, Flossie stopped to rest beside a tree. Suddenly, Fox was beside her. I have the proof, he said. See, I have thick, luxurious fur. Feel for yourself. Fox leaned over for Flossie to rub his back. Hmm, feels like rabbit fur to me, she said to Fox. Shucks, you ain't no fox. You a rabbit, all the time trying to fool me. Me? A rabbit? He shouted. I have you know my reputation precedes me. I am the third generation of foxes who have outsmarted and outrun Mr. J. W. McCutcheon's fine hunting dogs. I have raided some of the best hen houses from Franklin to Madison. Rabbit indeed! I am a fox and you will act accordingly. Flossie hopped to her feet. She put her free hand on her hip and patted her foot. Unless you can show me you a fox, I'll not accord you nothing. And without further ceremony, she skipped away. I'm going to stop here again. Oh my goodness, Flossie does not seem frightened at all. She's so calm and collected. She even pets 
the fox's fur. She's not bothered. That fox is very upset with her. I'm still wondering, does Flossie really know this is a fox or not? I'm wondering if maybe she's tricking him. I'm going to have to keep reading to find out. Down the road a piece, Flossie stopped by a bubbling spring. She knelt to get a drink of water. Fox came up to her and said, I have a long pointed nose. Now that should be proof enough. Don't prove a thing to me. Flossie picked some wildflowers. Come to think of it, she said matter of fact like, rats got long pointed noses. She snapped her fingers. That's it. You a rat trying to pass yourself off as a fox. That near bout took Fox's breath away. I beg your pardon, he gasped. You can beg all you wanna, Flossie said, skipping on down the road. That still don't make you no fox. I'll teach you a thing or two, young lady, Fox called after her. You just wait and see. Before long, Flossie came to a clearing. A large orange tabby was sunning on a tree stump. Hi, pretty kitty, the girl say and rubbed the cap behind her ears. Meanwhile, Fox slipped from behind a clump of bushes. Since you won't believe me when I tell you I'm a fox, he said stiffly, perhaps you will believe that fine feline creature toward whom you seem to have some measure of respect. Flossie looked at the cat and winked her eye. He shall use a heap of words, she whispered. Fox beckoned for Cat to speak up. Cat jumped to a nearby log and yawned and stretched. Then she answered, this is a fox because he has sharp claws and yellow eyes, she purred. Fox seemed satisfied, but Flossie looked at Cat. She looked at Fox, then once more at both just to be sure. She say, all due respect, Miss Cat, but both of y'all have sharp claws and yellow eyes, so that don't prove nothing. Captain, both y'all be cats. Fox went to howling and running round in circles. He was plumb beside himself. I am a fox and I know it, he shouted. This is absurd. No call for you to use that kind of language, Flossie said, and she skipped away. I'm going to stop here again. I am so surprised at how angry Fox is getting. Flossie doesn't seem to be bothered by his anger and his frustration at all. She just keeps referring to him as a different animal, even though he's getting more and more upset. And she continues to walk her path to end up at Miss Viola's house. I'm thinking back to the traditional story of Little Red Riding Hood. I know that Little Red Riding Hood, she was very frightened of the wolf of that story. And Flossie is not at all frightened by the fox of this story. I can definitely see how Patricia McKissick, the author, is developing Flossie into a stronger character than maybe Little Red Riding Hood was. We have to keep reading to see if we can continue develop, to develop what kind of character Flossie is. Let's keep going. Wait, wait! Fox followed pleading. I just remembered something. It may be the solution to this, this horrible situation. Good. It's about time. 
I, I, I have a bushy tail. Fox seemed to perk up. That's right, he said. All foxes are known for their fluffy, bushy tails. That has got to be adequate proof. Ain't gotta be. You got a bushy tail. So do squirrels. Flossie pointed to one overhead leaping from branch to branch in the treetops. Here, have a bite of peach, she said, offering Fox first bite of her treat. But Fox was crying like a natural-born baby. No, 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 he sobbed. If I promise you I'm a fox, won't that do? Flossie shook her head no. Oh, woe is me, Fox hollered. I may never recover my confidence. Flossie didn't stop walking. That's just what I've been saying. You just an old old confidencer. Come telling me you was a fox, then can't prove it. Shame on you. Long about that time, Flossie and the fox came out of the woods. Flossie cupped her hands over her eyes and caught sight of McCutcheon's quarters and Miss Viola's cabin. Fox didn't notice a thing. He just followed behind Flossie, begging to be believed. Give me one last chance, he pleaded. Flossie turned on her heels. Okay, but just this once more. Fox tried not to whimper, but his voice was real unsteady-like. I, I have sharp teeth, and I can run exceedingly fast. He waited for Flossie to say something. Slowly, the girl rocked from heel to toe, back and forth. You know, she finally said, smiling, it don't make much difference what I think any more. What? Fox asked. Why? Because there's one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's home behind you. He's got sharp teeth and can run fast, too. And, by the way that hound's looking, it's all over for you. Oh, I'm going to stop here again. Flossie doesn't seem surprised at all that these dogs are looking and staring at Fox. It's as if she was expecting Fox to get chased by the McCutcheon's hounds. This is making me sort of think that she was tricking Fox the whole time. She was trying to keep him maybe distracted while she was walking to the McCutcheon's house. Huh, she seems pretty clever. Let's finish the story and see if we're right. With a quick glance back, Fox dashed toward the woods. The hound knows who I am, he shouted. But I'm not worried. I sure can outsmart and outrun one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheonson's miserable mutts any old time of the day, because, like I told you, I am a fox. I know, said Flossie. I know. She turned toward Ms. Viola's with the basket of eggs safely tucked under her arm. Oh, my goodness, look at that great big smile on Flossie's face. Oh, she definitely knew he was a fox the whole time. She was tricking the fox. Flossie outsmarted the fox. Remember in the beginning when her grandmother was telling her to be careful of the sly fox? I think that Flossie outsmarted the fox so she could get to Ms. Viola's and deliver the fresh eggs without any trouble. 
Oh, man, I really love this story. Flossie and the Fox was a fabulous re revision of Little Red Riding Hood. I think Flossie was a smart, clever girl who never got outwitted and outsmarted by that fox. I hope you enjoyed Flossie and the Fox as much as I did. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and we can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye. Now that you've listened to the story, let's talk about it. Flossie and the Fox uses authentic dialect from the rural South, and Flossie herself even makes up her own words. How do the words and language in this text add to your overall enjoyment of the story? The way that Flossie outsmarts the fox is brave and clever. Tell about a time that you are brave and clever. How was this similar to Flossie? Retell the story of Little Red Riding Hood as you remember it. Compare and contrast Little Red Riding Hood to Flossie and the Fox. How are they similar? How are they different? Now it's your turn to write about it. Do you think Flossie knew the fox was a fox during the whole story? Explain why you think she did or didn't know. Try to describe a detail from both the beginning and end of the story. What was the problem of the story, Flossie and the Fox? What did Flossie do to solve her problem? Write one more page to the story, Flossie and the Fox. Include what you think could have happened once the McCutcheonson's hounds chased Fox away. Now it's time to have some fun. You can choose from any of the following activities. Use some old socks, paper bags, or other materials to make two puppets, one puppet for Flossie and the other for Fox. Put on a puppet show for someone to retell the story of Flossie and the Fox. Flossie and the Fox was a story that Patricia McKissick's grandfather told her when she was young. Ask someone older than you to tell you a story about a time before you were born. Try to even write that story down so you can remember it years from now. Use plastic eggs, rocks, or something else you have at home to represent the eggs in Flossie's basket. Play games with them like going on an egg hunt, egg relay, or hot egg potato. We hope you enjoyed today's read aloud of Flossie and the Fox. Bye-bye.